what I'd like to turn to is, what is your personal health protocol? So, uh, based on your study, what do you do to stay healthy and keep your uh, your inflammation down? Oh wow! It's this is a um, a long list of things. Um, so I I meditate. I work a lot. I keep myself very, very, very busy, but um, I pause every one uh, now and then. I do surfing uh, almost every morning um, and, uh, and avoid uh, grain and avoid, uh, I avoid uh, dairy products. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I don't touch anything that's not organic. I try to avoid pollutants as much as we can from the air here in California. It can be a little difficult, mm-hmm. um, but um, I'm trying to keep myself as protected from all these stressors. Aside from that, I, uh, I measure my inflammatory age uh, every couple months, two to three months. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also measure my pulse velocity testing using a, 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 um, a scale, uh, within scale. Um, and I am consuming my own supplements, my own list of supplements based on my immunotype. Uh, we're not mm-hmm. ready as a company to provide me with the proprietary um, final formulation yet, but, but I take that um, um, uh, over the counter. So, Right. So you just kind of make your own mix yeah yes exactly yeah also shell (laughs) so so the vascular age which is this this pulse wave aging right um Mm -hmm. is different from like uh your 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 epigenetic age but also uh, your metabolic age right which so do you see that like the vascular age as being the most in the most valid in terms of your your health rather than kind of metabolic age? I think there is a very clear connection between the endothelial aging, inflammation, and and damage in general, Mm -hmm. damage, physiological damage. Um, We're studying this um, with a brain aging study Mm -hmm. that we have in collaboration with UCSF. We're studying this in the infertility space Um, because it may very well be the case that uh, infertile women suffer from a similar elevated uh, inflammatory age that are prematurely aging their ovaries. Mm. Um, We're studying this in astronauts. And so we have a collaboration ongoing uh, where we're going to be studying uh, and we're getting some samples from historical um, studies uh, in where we're sending astronauts to the International Space Station for six months, and uh, we're measuring inflammatory age as they are exposed to dif- different stressors. Bottom line hypothesis is that this causes a form of accelerated aging of your vasculature, back to mm-hmm. vasculature, and that propagates um, uh, uh, throughout the body. Right. Okay. Interesting. So last question, where, where do you see the future of aging? I, I, I mean, in the next um, five, 10 years, how do you think things will change in the aging space? I can tell you where I think we should go, uh, which is not <laughs> I see happening at the moment. Um, so as we are more and more understanding from using multi-omics modalities, what are the triggers and the mechanisms of age-related pathology? We are able to postpone the age at which you, uh, at which you, you get sick, at, at which the disease kicks off. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're able even to avoid those diseases, right? And then maybe die quietly uh, well, you're 95 or 100 years old and, 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 and very healthy. That's what I think uh, we should aim for. Chronic disease is absolutely preventable. We can prevent chronic disease. Why we don't do it, right? It, we, mm-hmm. we, we know how to. And, and that's where I think the aging field should go to the multimorbidity 
to understanding mechanisms and developing the appropriate uh, therapeutics or preventative measures. Um, what I think is happening is um, a lot of buzz in the in the um, in the area of longevity, and thinking that we could live 150 or 200 250 years. Um, on the one hand, uh, we don't have any proof. Mm. On the other hand, I would personally uh, think um, it won't be feasible from a genetic standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to be 150 and super healthy. Um, I think we should focus our efforts in solving the diseases and indications that are age related and not necessarily age per se, because I'm not sure where we're going there. Okay, interesting. Yes, and certainly we need to solve the, the diseases of aging because I mean, there's no point in kind of living longer if you're suffering from all these diseases. Right. So biological aging, that's what I mean. Right? If yeah. we try to understand biological aging, we will be able to postpone um, and maybe even uh, avoid uh, these diseases. Um, I would encourage the, the scientific community to look at the immune system. <laughs> I think it's taking the lead. I think it's taking the lead. <laughs> it is, but it, it is amazingly complicated, the, the immune system. And that's an opportunity. So yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so great. I think on that note we can uh, we'll wrap up. So, uh, Dr. Furman, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you so much for the work you're doing and trying to uh, basically solve all these these diseases that are so prevalent. So, um, thank you so much, and I do hope that we get the opportunity to talk again. Thank you so much, Richard, for having me. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>